you still have time to change your plea to guilty. Now look, Paul, if you'll do that, I might get you off with life. But the way things... You're on the wrong side. You should be with a prosecutor. You may proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. Your Honor, the state calls as its next witness, James Stover. Call James Stover. James Stover will please take the stand. Mr. Stover, what is your occupation? I'm an investigator in the Scientific Investigation Division of the Police Department. Isn't it true that you're also the fingerprint and identity expert for SID? That's right. Now, Mr. Stover, I want to call your attention to exhibits A to J, admitted earlier. Particularly, I want you to notice the telephone, which has already been admitted and established by other witnesses as a death weapon. Have you ever seen it before? Yes. When? Just after Mayor Palmer was murdered. I was called in to make a fingerprint examination. Now, what did you find? The phone was unusually free of prints, as if it were new or had been recently cleaned. I did find something, however, may I? Oh, certainly. I did find fragmentary palm prints, hair and hair, that didn't match either those of the victim or the accused. But hair, we found and developed a set of perfect prints of the fingers of a right hand. This would be the natural spot to find such prints if the phone base were held to strike a blow. We left the prints on the base. Now, Mr. Stover, I want to ask you a very simple question. Were you able to identify these prints? I was. And to whom do they belong? They match exactly those of the defendant, Paul Moody. That's a lie. I never touched that phone in my life. Please, Paul, sit down. That's no good. Any repetition of this outburst, and I shall ask the bailiff to clear this court. You may proceed. Have you ever seen these before? Yes, they're microphotos I made of the set of prints on the telephone base. This is a blow-up of the prints we made later of Paul Moody. It doesn't take an expert to see the similarity. And the prints on the phone were so perfect that there isn't the slightest doubt. As an expert witness, what is your conclusion concerning your findings? In my opinion, the murder weapon, the phone, was held in the hand of the defendant. Do you mean by that that the hand that held the telephone and made these prints indisputably struck the blow that killed Mayor Palmer? I do. That's all. Your witness. Before cross-examination, court will recess for one hour. Recess, one hour. The prisoner will come with me. Shadowy effect, you know. Shadowy effect. Yeah, low key. Yeah. My luck, they had to send me to a murder trial. I could have been at a beauty contest today. Beautiful dames and cheesecake and coffee. A lot of. I... Wanted for murder, Sid Melton. Wanted. He should be in the wanted. Boy, that investigator really put it to him, didn't he? He sure did. I didn't think that boy was guilty at all, but he hasn't got a chance now. He'll go right to the gas chamber. <laughs> I'd hate to have that Stover guy testify against me. There he is. Well, Mr. Stover, I wonder if you'd answer a couple of questions for the Independent. I guess so. Tell me, how does it feel to kill a man, legally? How should I know? Because you just did. In there. You sent Paul Moody to the gas chamber just as sure as we're standing here. Look, I'm just an investigator. All I do is find the evidence and interpret it as accurately as I can. There was a mistake in the Smith case last winter, and Smith was hung. Suppose you made one. Would the evidence speak up and tell the court you were wrong? Let's not be ridiculous. If I hadn't identified those prints, any one of a thousand others could have done it. They were as perfect a set as I've ever seen. 
All I know is fingerprints are made by human beings. And wherever a human being is a case, brother, you're going to find mistakes. Well, you might be right in most cases, but fingerprints don't lie. And if Moody is convicted, his fingerprints did it, not me. Say, Miss, Mr. Stover, will you hold it for a still, please, huh? Just one still. This is an important shot for me, and it'll do me a lot of good if I get it. Just hold it, please, will you? Hold it. Hold it? Still? Yeah? What happened? Some surprises. Usually it doesn't happen. But will you hold it, please? Don't leave, Mr. Stover. Just brief him. Talk to him a moment. And see, what can that be? It usually doesn't work. If camera is shy. You see what I mean? Shadowy effect. You get no glare. Shadowy effect. No pictures. No job. Believe me, I wouldn't want to be in the spot of that fingerprint man. He's so calm and sure of himself, too. Funny. All the way back to the lab, I couldn't get out of my head what that reporter had been saying. How does it feel to kill a man legally? Sure, the evidence was airtight. But I had been the one who found it and interpreted it. Just to reassure and reconvince myself, I began thinking back over the case. Mayor Palmer had been elected only a few weeks before on a reform ticket. In his campaign, he promised to clean gambling and rackets out of the city. The people took him at his word and elected him mayor a few weeks ago. Everybody knew there was corruption in the city government. King Sullivan, the boss of the wide open rackets, had to have official protection to operate. It was so bad, Mayor Palmer had requested help from Washington. But Paul Moody was another matter altogether. He was considered a promising young artist. Moody submitted a design for a mural for the new city hall that everyone was sure would be the winner. But that wasn't the important thing to Mayor Palmer. What mattered was that Moody wanted to marry his daughter, Carolyn. And in retaliation, the mayor had just rejected his design for the mural. Apparently, the argument was pretty hot. I guess in Paul Moody's place, I'd have been as mad as he was. You see, Moody admitted everything, up to a point. Everything except what happened next. Coincidences, Frank Kelso arrived for an appointment with the mayor. Kelso happened to be the police commissioner under the man Palmer succeeded. He's an ex-policeman, and he was calling on the new mayor to try to keep his job. Hi, Jim. Hi. That's the murder weapon? Evidently. Nobody's touched anything. I discovered the body and went in the next room and called Grayson. Ah, boy. Oh, boy, I'm in time. Oh, you again. Yeah. Yeah, just one shot, huh? Look, I don't want my picture in the papers. Oh, don't worry. We'll retouch it. Just, just one shot, huh, Lieutenant? Well, why should I? Because if I get an exclusive like this, it'll mean a raise, and I need the money to support my doctor. He's a very sick man. Yeah. yeah wait a minute. Maybe I better use a red filter. You know the way things are going today, and him and hope. Yeah, we'll do it. Out. All right, but hurry it up. Yeah. Open your shutter. Oh, the lens, you silly fool. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> okay. Don't you think it's a little close? Well, I could open the window. I, you know. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I see. Huh? Didn't work. Well, cheap bulbs, you know. Well, wait. Uh, yeah. Hold it. Uh-huh. We'll use one of your old pictures in the morgue. You looked better then, you know. What have you got? Perfect prints. Fingers of a right hand on the base here. Good work. 
Give me the camera, Max. Hey, Grayson, do you have any idea where to begin this? Not yet. I have. You have? Yeah, you know that young artist who submitted the city mural, Paul Moody? Did you hear that Palmer turned him down just today? No, I hadn't. I think it'd be a very good idea to have a talk with Moody. You may be right. Jim, how much longer will you be here? Oh, 20, 25 minutes, why? I want you to pay a little visit with me. The commissioner and I will check the rest of the house. I'll be back and pick you up. Good. How do you like that? You think science would have perfected these things? Well, it doesn't matter, he moved. Don't you know anything about exposure? Oh, I don't know anything about exposures. Every time I stick my head out of the window without a head, I catch a cold. You belong to the union. I never see you at any of the meetings. If that's any good, I want a half dozen. You're so nervous. No, nothing, nothing's the matter. You know, when I worked in Paris, for the painters there, when they didn't feel like working, they took a walk. Yeah. I guess I never heard of those things called deadlines. Deadlines? Yeah. Deadlines means you gotta work whether you feel like it or not. I don't think I like these deadlines. Are you ready for me yet? Yeah, just a minute. Are you through with me? Yeah, I'm through. Shall I come back tomorrow? Come back tomorrow, same time. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Are you sure you want to work today, Paul? Well, I've got to work or do something to keep from blowing my top. Of all the rotten things to do, why, your design for the mural made the rest look like kindergarten sketches. Nadine, you, you know why he turned it down. Sure, because of Carolyn. But he shouldn't have let that influence him. Paul Moody? Yeah. We're from the police department. What do you want with me? Oh, uh, my model, Nadine Connell. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Lieutenant Grayson. This is Jim Stover, scientific investigator. Now, what's this all about? You uh, saw Mayor Palmer this afternoon, didn't you? Yeah. Mr. Moody, I could get an order, but it'll be a lot easier for all of us if you'll just cooperate. What do you mean? I'd like Mr. Stover to take your fingerprints. Well, sure, that's necessary. Just take a minute. All right, you want to wipe your hands off? What do you think, Jim? I'd say they match. Hmm. Match? Match what? Of course, I'd have to take them back to the lab and make an accurate comparison. It's good enough for me. Mr. Moody, you're under arrest. Arrest for what? The murder of Mayor Palmer. I better tell you that anything you say may be held against you. You might think it funny if I told you I didn't know anything about any murder until you came here. With your fingerprints on the murder weapon? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Fingerprints? So that's why... Oh, look at this. this is silly. I don't know anything about any murder. You made a mistake. All right, let's go. Paul, I'm just as surprised as you are. I hadn't made a mistake. I knew that. And those fingerprints convicted Moody just as sure as if he'd been caught with the telephone base in his hand. Yeah? That you, Jim? Uh-huh. State's attorney sent a couple Okay, send him in. Hello, Mr. Stover. This is Carolyn Palmer. The mayor's daughter? That's right. Oh, I wondered why you wanted the trial, Miss Palmer. I've been in the hospital, and you rushed things so here that... Public opinion was pretty hot about the case, Miss Palmer. Everybody liked your dad. They just wouldn't listen to any delay. 
Isn't it possible that you could have made a mistake? Why, Paul's the last person in the world who would kill Dad. He's in love with me. We're engaged. He knew what Dad meant to me. He, well, he just wouldn't, that's all. I appreciate your feelings, Miss Palmer. But look at it this way. We know that Moody had a strong motive. He admitted seeing your father and having an argument with him the afternoon he was killed. And point three, we had conclusive evidence that his hand held a telephone. That's a pretty good case. I know. Those fingerprints, that's all I've heard from Nadine, from you, from everyone. And they convicted him. Fingerprints don't lie, Miss Palmer. Just for a minute, suppose you didn't have those fingerprints. Why, other men had motives. Dad threw out the whole park board and made Grant pay back money. I know. Dad told somebody over the phone that he was going to convict a big city official of taking bribes from King Sullivan. Who? Police Commissioner Kelso. Kelso? It doesn't seem possible. More than that. You know, it was Kelso who discovered the body. There might be a chance if Moody could only explain how his fingerprints got on that phone. Look, if I can find evidence in Dad's things that Kelso did take bribes, will you try and help Paul? You know what the toughest part of that deal would be? What? Proving myself wrong. But you wouldn't want to be responsible for killing an innocent man? Moody wouldn't stand a chance no matter what you found unless I can prove I made a mistake about his fingerprints. Well, will you do it? I'll do my best. I didn't like what a newspaper guy said to me about that. If I could prove myself wrong, I'd sleep a lot better at night. If I can't, well, I'll sleep a lot better than anyway. I don't like to have you see me like this. As if it made any difference. You don't believe in the verdict, then? Of course not. You couldn't make me believe it. You and the dean are the only ones who don't. Well, Mr. Stover's coming down from the lab. Stover? What for? I want to show him what I found. Here he is, Carolyn. Hi. Hi. Hello, Moody. Hi. Nadine said you wanted to see me. I certainly do. I surprised somebody going through Dad's safe last night. Now, there wasn't anything but money in the safe, and he didn't touch it. So, he must have been after something else. Well, that's logical. You didn't tell anybody what you were going to do. No one but you. 
And there must be a leak somehow. You see, all of Dad's papers were at the bank. Well, this morning I went through his safety deposit box, and I think I found it. Cancel check? Well, what about it? Don't you see? It could be the evidence that Dad had that Kelso took bribes. I think Kelso endorsed that check. I'll compare it with his signature at the lab. But even if they do match, there's still your fingerprints on that telephone. We're back to that again. Please, Paul, he's anxious to help you, but he has to face facts. Isn't there some way you can account for him? Maybe you grab the phone without realizing. I tell you, never touch that phone. Maybe on another visit. I was never in Mayor Palmer's study until I got a call to go there that afternoon. That's right, I remember. I took that call. That's funny, come to think of it. What? When I got there, your father told me he, he didn't make any call. Said he didn't know anything about it. Is there anything else that happened And say, the week before the murder that might give us a lead? Nothing. No, that couldn't have anything to do with it. Well, what is it? At least tell us. Well, it may be just an idea of mine. I thought somebody had been in my studio. But we went all over it and nothing was taken or even moved. Well, that doesn't seem to mean much one way or the other right now. You still think Paul's guilty? I don't think anything. It's my job to find the evidence and interpret it. If that makes him guilty, why? But you don't want to help me anymore, is that it? I didn't say that. I'm going through the motions like I promised. I know you'll do everything you can, and that's all we can ask. I'm afraid you're going to get your hopes built up for nothing, that's all. Bye. Bye, Paul. Bye, Miss. Bye. Bye. You're wonderful, what you're doing. Nothing seems to be any good. I'm sorry, darling. It means a lot. Just knowing you don't think like the rest. Goodbye, Paul. Bye, dear. Castle did endorse that check? I'm sure of it. Every one of the characteristics matches. That makes this check a real hot potato. Is that enough to free Paul? I'm sure that Kelso endorsed the check from King Sullivan. Just as sure as I am that Paul Moody's fingerprints were on that telephone. Oh, Mr. Silver. Hello, Commissioner. I haven't had a chance to congratulate you on your fine presentation of evidence in court. Well, Miss Palmer. Thank you. I've always been very interested in fingerprints. Made quite a study of them while I was on the force. It was a fine job. You certainly gave the jury a lesson in scientific crime detection. Great shock to all of us, Miss Palmer, about your father. Thank you. Keep up the good work, boy. That was close. He's a smooth operator. This check can put him in jail. Too bad it won't help Moody. But isn't there any chance you could be wrong about those fingerprints? Come over here. Let me show you something about fingerprint identification. You know what prints are. Impressions of the papillary ridges of the tips of the fingers. Say each of us has ten prints apiece. Every one of them will be different from the other. I know that. Each one of those prints has up to 50 identifiable characteristics. If we can find even a fragment of a print, we can identify it positively. In this case, I had five perfect prints on that telephone. Take a look at just one of them. The 
It doesn't even take an expert to see they're exactly the same. If there were a few quadrillion people on Earth and each one of them had a thousand children or so, it might be possible to find another set exactly like these. But I wouldn't count on it even then. Well, I guess you're right. I, I don't know what to do. Even I can tell her the same. I'm sorry. For your sake, I wish I were wrong. The print on the phone is even better than the one you took. What did you say? Why, well, that the print on the phone is better than yours. And suppose I hadn't seen it. Jim, what's the matter? Funny how you get so wrapped up in your own convictions you can't see anything else. It almost made me kill a man. What are you talking about? Like that reporter said, legally. I wondered why Moody kept insisting he never touched that phone, even though it hurt his case. You want to know why? Because he was telling the truth. You mean Paul didn't touch it? Somebody forged his prints. Forged? Well, how do you know? There are no pores on these prints. Well, is that possible, to forge them? There are several ways to duplicate prints. The best I've ever seen were done with a moulage process. Oh, just anybody can't do it. It takes a real expert who knows just how we work. Could Kelso have done it? Well, he's an ex-policeman. He said he's always been interested in fingerprints. If he practiced a lot, maybe... Wait a minute. Now I remember something else. Where are those palm prints I got off the phone? Where was it exactly that Kelso leaned his hand? Well, right here on the corner, I think. Yeah. Just a minute. Now, this is the palm print that I got off of the phone. It didn't match either your father's or Moody's. Well, are those good evidence? Almost as good as fingerprints if you can't get those. Scotland Yard uses palm prints quite often. I didn't know that. Not many people do know it. Let's hope our criminal didn't. He didn't. Then it's Castle? It sure is. And you know Kelso said in front of witnesses that he didn't touch a thing in that room. But how does it all fit together? Now, don't rush me. This is as new to me as it is to you. Let's say that Kelso wanted to frame Paul for the murder. First, he'd have to make sure that Paul had been there. A phone call? Yeah. Now, let's assume that he killed your father with the telephone. The next thing he would do would be to get rid of the fingerprints. And that checks. Then he faked Paul's prints on the base. Right. He'd obviously wear gloves when he handled the phone. But suppose he picked it up like this. Now he'd think he was safe because his fingers wouldn't print. But the gloves wouldn't cover the palms of his hands and they left prints. Oh, thanks, Jim. Wait a minute. Thinking those prints were forged and proving it are two different things. What kind of proof? Oh, we've got to have evidence that he had access to Moody's prints, for one thing, and that he knew forgery. Say, Moody said he thought somebody had been in his studio, didn't he? That's right. I'm not an art lover, but I'd like to get a look at that studio again anyway. If you would just kind of like put your hand on your knee, huh? If you just could tell us what you have in mind. Well, oh, <laughs> oh, well, I did tell you. But only in English? In Europe, every good photographer gives all instructions in French. <coughs> well, excusez-moi. <coughs> Cherchez la flamme. 
I tell you, you're lucky, you're lucky I didn't say it in Brooklyn, because if I do, we never get the picture taken. Is this guy so do you? I'm afraid so. pictures in the paper. I don't see what it has to do with the case. The press is always interested in new developments. Yeah. Yeah, you see, my paper believes in a full coverage. Then why don't we put some clothes on? My paper and I don't always agree. But it's cold in here. It is. Well, don't worry, because if you catch anything up to and including pneumonia, I'm ready for you. Great. Uh, you see, these are antihistamine pills. See? Then I have, I have anti-antihistamine pills. Uh, when you throw with the antihistamine pills. Somehow I'd sort of like to keep mine around a while. Medical authorities disagree on it. You sneak. the medicine you need. You see, I write a prescription for you. E pluribus unum of vini vidi vici. I, hey, that's it. That's it. Hold it. That's great. Hold it. This will be real George. Hold it. If... Schmo says he needs some cheesecake for his Sunday supplement. Didn't that strike you as a little odd? Why? This paper doesn't publish on Sunday. Why, you little soul. Sorry, I got a deadline. I get my hands on you. <laughs> well, what do we do now, Professor? Well, it's a lot to hope for, I know, but we've been lucky so far. I'd like to prove that Kelso came up here and lifted a set of Moody's prints. Uh -huh. Yeah, this corner here's been cleaned. I wonder why. What'd you find? Unless my sense of touch is slipping, this could be some of our own formula fingerprint powder. Chalk and mercury. I'll check it in the lab. Give me my kit, will you? Two bucks and Moody's prints were lifted off of that desktop, and he just forgot the floor when he cleaned up. Well, that's your first point, then, that he had access to the prints. That's right. Now we're paying Commissioner Kelso a little visit. Thank you. 
to catch a thief. You're too good at that. I'm glad you're on the right side. The council shows up, that's the way out. Now we need evidence he knew how to forge prints. lenses. He could have used them to photograph prints. It doesn't prove anything. What's that? Just a glass slide. Out of an enlarger, probably. But wait a minute. Hey, do we don't. This isn't our apartment. Yeah, but they all look alike. I told you not to take that last drink. He couldn't possibly have made these prints himself. They had to be put here by somebody else. You mean they were forged? It's my guess that Kelso used this plate to experiment with before he put the prints on the phone. He got rid of everything else, but he forgot to wipe off this piece of glass. Is that enough for a new trial? I think it'll get a confession out of Kelso. If not, yeah, I think it'll reopen. Somebody's coming down the hall. with King and have him meet me in your apartment tonight. Tell him to bring along plenty of cash. Yeah. What? Oh, tell him the roof just fell in, that's all. I'll be over in a little while, honey. Right. of you. I didn't ask you to. I know, I know, but think of the fun we could have. South America, maybe, or even Europe. I like it here. But you said that any time that... Get wise, Buster. You think I'd waste my time on you because I wanted to? I take my orders from King just like everybody else. Oh, you dirty... Well, playing a little rough. 
enough, aren't you? What's all this about you all of a sudden having to take a trip? That's about it, King. Everything's gone wrong. I thought you had everything fixed up perfect. Maybe too perfect. They found a glass with some fake fingerprints when they searched my hotel room. They what? I didn't think they knew about the room. I thought I'd gotten rid of everything, but I forgot that. You got the cash. Well, let's talk this thing over sensibly. I'll admit you have a problem, but why should that cost me a lot of money? Why? Why, we're both in this together. Oh, I don't quite see it that way. Do you? Uh-uh. Rod? All I know is you killed a guy to save your neck and planted some fake fingerprints. But where do I fit in the picture? Explain it to me. I'll tell you where. I killed Palmer to protect both of us. And I'm not going to take the rap alone. Oh, you're not? No. And if I can't tie you in any other way, I've still got those licenses in my desk drawer from the liquor commissioner. Okay, I'm convinced. I see things different now. You do need a trip. Don't you think so, Rod? Bad. Why don't you bring the car around? Right. Well, how about a little drink while we're waiting? Sure, King. Try to explain things so perfectly. I'm sorry, Mr. Sullivan. I don't give up so easily. You won't need the car. I should have my head examined for getting mixed up with you two. If I get caught, you don't get away either. stuck around. Why did you have to do it here? Get him out! Here are the details of Kelso's palm print that I got off of the telephone and the matching print. You remember he said he didn't touch anything. I analyzed the powder traces we found in the studio and they're definitely our great formula print powder. I think Paul Moody's forged prints on that glass are conclusive. You know, if we can get something out of Kelso, I think we might have a case. I swear I never knew of anyone going to so much trouble just to prove himself wrong. Is it all right if I tell Paul? Sure it is. But remember, there's nothing certain until we sweat Kelso. This is Grayson. Get me a special detail. A couple of men. Want to come along? I wouldn't miss it. Oh, it's you again, huh? Yes, sir, it's me. I'm sorry. Hmm. Lieutenant, I just heard about the detail outside. Something happened, huh? Will you let me get one shot, huh? All right, but hurry it up, will you? Thanks very much. Just one shot. We'll make it a nice, interesting angle. You know, one of those real artistic angles. Maybe we'll hit the front page or something, huh? Let's see what we do with this now. Just bear with me and see what happens. Hold it now. Hold it for still. Hold it. Still? Oh, gosh. What is that? I can't understand it. It never works. What is that? Wait a minute. Just give me a minute. Talk among yourselves. Must be something here. 
missing persons. I can't understand. It's true, Paul. Jim found enough evidence. They proved your fingerprints were forged. Can't believe it. <laughs> Christmas can't come this early. They've gone to pick up Kelso now. I didn't think you could do it. You know, Carolyn, now I not only love you, I, I owe my life to you. like suicide, huh? I don't buy it. Nothing the color of the face and lips. Look at the finger marks on the throat. I'm no medical expert, but I bet there's no gas in his lungs. Call the coroner. Hold it! Still! Are you crazy? With this room full of gas, you'll blow the whole place up. What difference does it make? He's dead. You're a brilliant idiot. There's nothing. Well, I hate to pay his gas bill. The oval shape shows that the hair was slightly wavy. The length, of course, indicates it was a woman. Anything else? It's been dyed probably quite a few times. There's something peculiar about the dye. It has a definite purple cast under the microscope. She's had a permanent wave. It's been flattened out in several places. Looks like the beauty parlors have given that hair quite a beating. <laughs> you uh, can't find her phone number in there, can you? <laughs> no, but... We can come pretty close to positive identification through the pigmentary granules and the other characteristics. You know, King Sullivan has a gal friend with funny colored hair. I've had a tail on her for a month. Is that so? Yeah, she wouldn't be too far from this description. She's even had a call from Kelso. Have you got anything on her? No, I haven't. But uh, if you were to help me out with a couple of um, little white scientific lies, strictly in line of duty, of course, I think we might bluff her into telling us what she knows. Okay? Okay. Oh, say, uh, what did you find on those liquor licenses from Kelso's desk? Oh, they've been altered all right. Look at them photographed under infrared. Yeah, I see. They have been changed. That must have been the reason for Sullivan's payoff. The liquor commission sent him to Kelso to investigate, and he sat on them for 10,000 bucks. And has quite a bird. Yeah. Well, let's go pay a call on a gal with funny colored hair, huh? I'm ready. Yeah? Mr. Val? That's right. We're the police. Open the door, please. Sure. I don't get it. What could you possibly want me for? I just want to have a little talk with you. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. How did you ever get mixed up in a thing like this, honey? Mixed up? I'm not mixed up in anything. Mm, I'm afraid you are. Very beautiful hair, isn't it, Jim? Sure is. Would you like to have a lock of it? If Mr. Val doesn't object, just a strand or two. Sure, I guess so.
You going somewhere, Miss Duval? What? I just noticed your traveling bag. Oh, no. Just, just some things I, I was taking to a friend. Oh, I see. They're the same, all right. What's this all about? I'm afraid that hair of yours ties you in with a murder. Huh? These hair strands were found on the body of Police Commissioner Kelso after he was murdered last night. They match yours exactly. And there's no argument with modern science. But I had nothing to do with it. How did the strands of hair get there if you went in Kelso's apartment? But I never left here last night. Then Kelso was here. And you murdered him? No. Oh, no, I didn't do a thing to him. Except help make a deal with him and King Sullivan. Oh, then it was King Sullivan who murdered him. By himself? <laughs> no. Rod Berenger helped him. Kelso came here and tried to make trouble. So they killed him, took him to his home to make it look like suicide. I tried to stop him. I didn't want him murdered. There was nothing I could do about it. Sit still. Hello, baby. Hello, King. Oh, what's up, Lieutenant? Well, we're trying to clear up a couple of problems. We knew most of the answers already, but your girlfriend filled us in on a few points. Let's not play games. Okay, we'll get down to cases. You're under arrest, King, for the murder of Police Commissioner Kelso, for complicity in the murder of Mayor Palmer. Uh, shall I go on? Why not? Then there's forging of official documents, liquor licenses, to be specific, the bribery of a public official. We have the canceled check. All right, Copper, just try taking me in. You don't really think you're going to get away with my men out there? All right, get over. Just try to make them lie, that's all. To the bride and groom. Hey, oh boy, that's great. Hold it. Hold it. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, there's something wrong. I don't know what. I think I do. That's it. That's great. That's wonderful. Hold it, kid. Hold it. Oh, oh gosh. Fiddly, doubly. We titulate my emotion. Whatever did I? Why is it I? Can't... 